esteemed panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you a conflict that has reached extraordinary heights in terms of number of recorded persecution and murders. This is the conflict that Christianity is facing as the persecuted church around the world. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Article 18 establishes that all people have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. Christians currently represent 80% of the persecuted minority. More than a hundred million Christians are persecuted globally. 7,000 Christians were murdered in the last year alone because of their Christian faith. And this is recognized as being a significantly underestimated figure, as it does not include murders in Iraq, in Iraq, Syria, and North Korea, some of the top five countries in the world where violent persecution is the norm. Every five minutes, if one Christian is killed in Iraq. The 2016 Open Doors World Watch List, showing the top 50 countries in the world where persecution is most severe for Christians, reports an alarming rise of 50% in persecution and severity of persecution over the past three years. Iraq is number two on this country profile list. In Nigeria, Boko Haram is systematically slaughtering Christians with 4,000 deaths alone in the last year and 2.1 million people displaced. Never in history have we seen such a global high in Christian religious persecution. The British Parliament, the European Parliament, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, the US Congress, the USA Secretary of State, Pope Francis, and Christian leaders from different denominations have said that the actions perpetrated by ISIS towards Christians are to be considered genocide. Christians are being murdered, decapitated, crucified, beaten, kidnapped, burned alive, tortured, abused in all possible ways and put into slavery. Their homes and places of worship are being destroyed, in certain cases wiping out whole villages. This is not a conflict between Muslim and Christians. As perhaps you may be led to believe, but between those who sustain hatred and murder as a way of vindicating their own sense of ideologies and beliefs. And those who understand that freedom of conscience acknowledges dialogue as being the only valid instrument.
place. And I hope that we can get back this conscience and take this understanding with us in our hearts and to share this from God's heart to many other people. God bless you. Boko Haram means Western education is forbidden and their goal is to create an Islamic state. We as Huaiwan are advocating in the United Nations on behalf of the persecuted church. For this reason, we consider it of great importance to be in the place where those things are happening and to hear people's hearts. So we travel to Nigeria. the states of Bono, Yobe and Adamawa were declared as states of emergency. In April 2014, Boko Haram drew international condemnation by abducting more than 200 schoolgirls as sexual slaves. We had the opportunity to speak with the governor in the city of Jobs. They help us a lot in many ways providing security, information, and some of the footage for this video. They wanted the reality of this issue to be known internationally. We had the challenging task of interviewing people from different towns that have suffered these attacks. The suffering, as we imagine, was devastating. Families and houses and entire cities were lost. Despite everything they share with us, we were so impacted by their ability to see beyond the pain. They have graciously adopted an attitude of forgiveness towards their persecutors, as well as a deep sense of community and a common desire to see restoration among them. And this is only one example of all the cases of Christian persecution around the world. We want to bring awareness, so this will no longer be unknown. Ay, 
patunay lamang na one man's noble dream can go beyond a lifetime. Tradition of Christian worldview. And welcome back to Christian World News. Muslim rebel groups like the one that kidnapped Gracia and Martin Burnham have been fighting the Philippine government for decades. They feed on the hatred ordinary Muslims feel toward what they perceive as an oppressive Christian government. But in one village, that attitude is changing. Once again, here's Jay Estaba. In the year 2000, the Philippine government launched an all-out war against the biggest Muslim rebel group in the country the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, MILF. Hardest hit was the Labayan, a small village in southern Philippines. We were at a loss on uh, our Tulu. Uh, practically, uh, our uh, relatives have uh, scampered to different areas. I was very angry with the Christian military because they burned our house and our jeep. The Muslim residents of Irvine blame the Christians for their fate, but much of their surprise, in their time of need, it was a Christian military officer, Colonel Johnny Makanas, who came to the rescue. Colonel Makanas admits he hated Muslims in the past. In my Christian life, there was a time when I prayed that all Muslims would go to hell. But God would later change his heart after hearing the preaching of a missionary to the Muslims the late Pastor Florentino de Jesus. Pastor de Jesus in that afternoon gave this statement. Who are we to hate and curse the Muslim people whom God has blessed and loves us? Yes. I cried for God and repented for my biases against the Muslim and said, Lord, if you want to use my life to bless the Muslims, so be it. Use me. God heard his prayers. In April 2001, Colonel Makanas, along with the help of Christian churches and the military, launched Project Islam. I sincerely love all Muslims. Its first recipients were the residents of the Levian. Food, clothing, water, and other basic needs were provided for them. Houses were also built. Since then, the Muslims of the Levian have become more trusting of the Christians and more open to the gospel. Because Christians reached out and demonstrated the love of Jesus, life in Delavine has become more peaceful. As a result, some rebels surrendered to the Philippine government. To ensure a bright future for the youth, Project Islam recently granted college scholarships to 19 young men and women of Delavine. If I were not a scholar, I might have joined the rebels too. Even if my memory of war is ugly, I am thankful because my life is better. Now I can go to college, and our place is beautiful because of Project Islam. Today, Project Islam has built 210 houses that serve as homes to more than 400 Muslim families here in the Levine. What used to be a place of bloodshed has now become a refuge where peace and unity reign, a reality that can be achieved not only here in the Philippines, but hopefully around the world. Jay is on Christian World News, Philippines. Thanks again, Jay. That's our report for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. And until then, goodbye and God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be reading my message to you this, this afternoon in my own language. I am very thrilled and happy that I will be I am able to join you this day. It is an honor for me to share with you the things that are happening in our country, the Philippines. The things that are happening, the, the chaos that you are seeing, started with uh, misunderstanding and ideologies. 
Kristen dari Iran, mana cara guna di luaran tak menentuk serigma. Therefore, there is a hatred and warfare. At dahil dito, marami buhay ang lawasa at nagdulog ng Iran. And because of this, many lives have been destroyed and caused so much suffering. Lumpur, galit at puo. Sadness, anger, and bitterness. At hindi pagpuunawaan. And intense misunderstanding. Ngunit sa isang sabi. But for a moment. Dahil sa pagbabago ng puso. Because of a change of heart. Lumikha ang pag-ibig. Created love. Kapatawaran. Forgiveness. At malasakit. And forgive them. At and compassion. At naghilom ang sukat na dulot ng hira. And the wounds of war have been healed. At nagkaroon ng pagkakaisa. And there is unity. Pagmamahalan. Love. Katahibigan at kayapaan. And peace. Ang ating nakikita sa video ito. What we saw in this video. Patunay na mamimitin kapayapaan is proof that peace can be achieved at ay makakami and kapag ang uniral ang pag-ibig, kapatawalan at malasakit if love reigns and compassion rules sa bawat puso ng man in every heart of man sa kasalukuyan, patuloy ang buhayin at present, the work is continuing nagtulong-tulong ang gobyerno at ibang sektor ng lipunan Government and civil societies are helping one another. Upang manatili ang hinahangat na pamatagalan ng kapayapa. To achieve the dreamt long-lasting peace. Malami ang pong nakapatap nakapatapos sa pag-aaral. There are many who have already finished their studies. Ay kayo ng sulahan at hospital. They built schools and hospitals. Patuloy ang pagtulong sa mga nangangailangan sa lugar ng Dilay. And continued support for all of those in need in Dilay. Sa kasulukuyan ang gobyerno ng Bansang Pilipinas. At present, the government of the Philippines ay maroong kasunduan na ilunsat ang tigil utukan have agreed to have a ceasefire sa pamagitan ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas at mga rebelde na umaklas sa pamahala between the government of the Philippines and the rebels that have um, that are going against the government. Upang bigyan daan ang sapang pamatagalang kapayapa. To give way for lasting peace. At naglaan ang malaking pundo ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas. And the government of the Philippines uh, gave para sa taong 2017 for 2017 sa halaga ng 3.35 trillion pesos in 3.35 trillion pesos o 71.97 billion dollars or 71.97 billion dollars at pinalaan sa iba't ibang departamento ng gobyerno for all the departments of the government upang tugunan ang mga pangangailangan to respond to the needs labanan ang problema ang kinakaharap to combat the problems that they are facing. Na nagdulot ng kahirapan na siya isang dahilan sa kaguluhan. That have caused the poverty, which is one of the main causes of the chaos. Isa sa mga programa ng gobyerno. One of the programs of the government. Ay ang kahalagaan na ibalik ang maayos na moralidad. Is the Valued Restoration Program. Na ang halikain ay pagsangkap sa bawat Pilipino. Which is motto is to embrace every Filipino upang maibalik ang magandang asal at magiging tapat sa pamilya. To bring back moral values such as trustworthiness or faithfulness to the family. Tapat sa kapwa tao. Faithfulness to others. Tapat sa trabaho. Faithfulness at work. Tapat sa gobyerno. Faithfulness with the government. Higit sa lahat tapat sa kanyang tungkulin at pananapataya sa Diyos. And most of all, faithful in his duties and his faith in God. Na siyang tunay na makapagbabago ng puso. Which actually brings change of the heart. At isa buhay ng pag-ibig sa kapwa at tao. To live out love for their fellow man. Let me end this word 
from the gospel that it saves. He who began the good works will come into completion until the day in Christ Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Argentinian connection uh, here, and that is uh, really very exciting for, for me as an Indian. 